Hi, I'd like to show you how to use the Canvas Equation Editor for classes like Calculus. You may find it helpful to print the Tips for Instructure Canvas Equation Editor worksheet. This will give you the text that generates some of the symbols used on the palette. You can find those tips here at busynessgirl.com slash resources slash handouts and scroll down the page to find Tips for Instructure Canvas Equation Editor. Again, this is just a fast reference. You can find everything on the buttons, but sometimes it's nice to be able to just type and not pick up your mouse all the time. So let me show you how to do a few things that might relate to calculus. So we're going to start by going to the Insert Math Equation button, the Pi button. And let's start with something like a derivative. So we might want to say uh, y double prime or y prime. And so you can get those off the basic menu here. You see primes right here. You can also get them with a backslash prime. So if you want one prime, just press it once. If you want a double prime, press it twice. Triple prime, press it three times. So we can say something like y triple prime plus, and again we can generate it with backslash prime as well. So when you hit that you'll get a prime as well. We should probably put a y in front of that. Um, and if you want to do like an, a third or fourth derivative, sometimes we use that notation with a parentheses in the superscript. So we just need to use superscript, which is shift um, uh, 6 to get a caret, and then a little parentheses like a 4, like that would be the fourth derivative of x, like that. So when we insert that into the equation editor, we'll see it shows up with all the proper looking notation there. Remember that to get a new line, you can't hit enter inside the equation editor, you have to hit enter outside of it. So let's go ahead and generate a new line here. And let's go ahead and work with something like an integral symbol. So to get an integral symbol, we can use backslash int space to get an integral, or you can pull it here off the basic menu, and the integral symbol is right there. So for an indefinite integral, that is one with no limits, we can just use that, and then a parentheses maybe to hold our expression, something maybe like x squared, and again that's just with the caret button, minus 2x, using the tab or the arrow keys to get out of that, dx. So that would insert our integral equation, or our integral expression here. It looks very nice on screen. To go back in and edit it, just click on it and go back into the equation editor. Let's say I want limits from 0 to 1 on this now. I'm just going to place my cursor there and I need a subscript and a superscript. You can get that off the basic menu here with sub and soup. Um, there are text commands to get that, but it's much faster to use an underscore for sub and a caret for soup. So let's go ahead and use an underscore here to get 0, tab or arrow to get out of that and then a caret to get the superscript and type 1 caret or tab or use an arrow key to get out and when we insert that you're going to see it appears very nicely on the screen. You're actually going to use the exact same thing for a summation notation. So let's go ahead and do a problem with summation notation. Um, so to get a sum we could use backspace sum like that. As soon as we hit a space we'll see that capital sigma appear. And again, to get something below and above here, we need to use a superscript and a subscript. So I'm going to use underscore for the subscript, and I'm going to say as n goes from 1, and then I'm going to use a caret for the superscript. And for infinity, I can use back, backslash infty, or I can pull it off of a menu. It's on the miscellaneous menu right here. Okay. So that's the summation from n equals 1 to infinity, and now I'll put something in here, maybe like 1 over n squared, so that's 1 over, I just use the division symbol, n caret 2 for the n squared. And it looks kind of bad on the screen right now, but I promise that when you insert it, it's going to look very nice in the window, just the way you'd expect to see it typeset in a textbook. And if you hover over it, you can actually see the LaTeX code that's being used to generate it. Um, sometimes it's kind of a short code in Canvas. Finally, I think I better show you how to do limit notation. It's going to use just about the same trick we used here. We'll go into the equation editor. We'll type lim for limit. And then anything we put in the subscript, so use underscore to get to the subscript, that will show up um, below the limit when it actually generates the live text. So I can use x, and then I can choose an arrow from the menu here. So the short arrows appear right here. Or you can just use backslash right arrow for that. So I could say, for example, the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x. Just make sure you arrow outside of the subscript for that equals 5, or whatever you want to say. And when we insert the equation, we'll see uh, the proper notation again with that x approaches 2 appearing beneath the limit. And when you hover over it, you'll see again the LaTeX that's being used to generate that. So um, 
Again, I just have to tell you that this handout might be particularly helpful for you for generating um, other types of things quickly. In particular, there are Greek letters towards the bottom of this, um, and so you might find that helpful for doing them quickly. But again, remember that anytime you go in here, if there's something you want to use all the time, you can just hover over it to see how you can generate it with just text. So, for example, to generate a delta, we would just type backslash delta. As soon as you hit the space, it's going to generate the proper letter the way you want it, or the proper symbol the way you want it, and then just insert it onto the screen. So, anyways, I hope that's helpful for you, and um, again, to find the handout if you want it, uh, go to busynessgirl.com slash resources slash handouts.